Good morning, everyone. So, uh, welcome back to my early, super early morning uh, video series. Um, I am sure that 90% of you are still asleep, uh, probably even more than that. Anyways, uh, so just going over some information from chapter two, um, a couple of really key points. <clears throat> In the state of Pennsylvania, an, in, an individual has to be evaluated, so we call it a re-evaluation report, every three years. So the purpose of it is really to just determine whether or not the student continues to be eligible for special education. Um, so it's a good stopping point to really figure out, um, does the kiddo still um, qualify? Are they both eligible and in need for special education? Are they making meaningful progress? Um, so it's kind of a check-in point with the team to say, okay, is what we're doing working? Um, and does this child still continue to, to need to receive special education? The only difference from that is for an individual with an intellectual disability. Um, individuals with an intellectual disability actually need to have a reevaluation report every two years. So for all of the IEP students, speech, um, uh, everyone else, um, learning support, autism support, everyone else, it's every three years. The only difference is for students who have, who are qualified under an intellectual disability. That's every two years. So hopefully that clarifies that. Um, so that's just a little bit of um, some insights to the reevaluation process. Um, a couple of other things is, um, so once a student is evaluated, um, they, oh, look who's coming to visit. There's the dog. Um, in any case, um, once a student is evaluated, uh, we have 30 days to create an IEP. Um, so <clears throat> that's just the timelines. I am going to put up the Pennsylvania state timelines for you. Um, I, I think it's just good practice um, for you to realize that you will become part of future IEP meetings um, or, or multiple disciplinary meetings. Um, so once a student is found to be eligible, we do only have 30 days to create an IEP um, so that that student can start to receive services. The reason is obviously it, once a student is qualified, they are eligible and in need of services. We don't want to wait, you know, six months to start to provide the student with services. Um, and then in terms of IEPs, um, I, we've already talked about this, but IEPs are absolutely a legally binding document. So um, we always, I always work with general education teachers and special education teachers to just remind them that anything that's in the IEP must be implemented. It is a legally do binding document from the district, which we all also call the local educational agency or LEA, and the student's family. Um, and that's what they, they, that's the document that says these are the types of support and services that this child is going to receive. The difference between the IEP and the NORUP, uh, the IEP is like the plan, so it, it details what we're going to provide. The NORUP, or Notice of Re Recommended Educational Placement, is what uh, gives the, it's the parent's uh, permission to basically implement the plan. Um, so oftentimes we hear parents say, well, I don't agree with this IEP. They may not agree with components of the IEP, um, but that doesn't necessarily state that the child won't receive services. Um, the NORUP is what dictates the child services. So an example, an IEP may have certain uh, specifically designed instructions listed in it, um, but the NORUP is where it will dictate where the services are to be received and the level of support that's to be received. Hopefully that helps with everyone. If you have questions, as always, don't hesitate. Thanks. Bye.